So for me, when I was a kid, you know, a typical day, hard to think of one. Uh, my parents had irregular jobs, so my mom, you know, smuggled food for a living for a while um, on the black market. And sometimes I would wake up in the, these mornings and her friend from the village would be sleeping next to me because I, I didn't, you know, she had to leave in the middle of the night. So it's hard for me to think back to what a typical day was like, but I do remember uh, going to school for two hours and then we'd go to church. That was, that was it, with school and then church. Schoolhouse didn't have doors or windows. It was just kind of open all the time. So in the mornings, you know, the principal would have to come in and clean it. Um, I just remembered sitting with kids and there was a picture of Uncle Ho and we talked about how great Uncle Ho was. And I remember this one story where my teacher asked me if I loved Uncle Ho and I told her no. And because <laughs> Uncle Ho put my dad in prison, you know? um, so we had those little things. But I, I don't remember learning that much. Uh, we kind of we did a little marching now and then. I I remember the first time I got an ink pen. Uh, it, it was a big deal because I'd moved on from pencils. Um, I do remember that. But in terms of the content, that's a lot of Uncle Ho. What did you eat for breakfast or for lunch? Uh, well, obviously a lot of rice and we didn't have a lot of protein so one of the ways that my mom would make it last longer was she'd cook in a lot of fish sauce and sugar and so we'd, we'd have this really you know savory meal with rice and a little bit of you know meat to go with it um, I remembered on special occasions we'd get you know this uh, glass noodle with, with chicken um, but that was kind of rare um, I also remember being thirsty all the time because we had water from a well and the only th way you can make it potable is to, turn, to, to brew some tea in it. I never liked tea. And so uh, um, that was me being thirsty all the time. I remember the time I fell out of my mango tree. I was lying on a hammock, I fell out, and I dislocated my shoulder. And there wasn't a doctor doctor in the village. So we went to this guy, he used to be a medic, and he tried to pop my shoulder back into place. That didn't work, so they took me finally to the city. And once again, I, I see a picture of Uncle Ho. My mom was holding me in the hospital, and the doctor had a picture of Uncle Ho. And I kicked the picture <laughs> because I, I, I first, you know, I was indoctrinated not to like Uncle Ho. Um, and they finally set it back. I remember I was mad at my father for a long time uh, because he had sent me to the first guy. And I, I do recall him trying to bribe me with a, a bag of, of sugarcane water, you know, hopefully, so I won't be mad at him anymore, but I was pretty sore about that. Um, uh, we were really, really poor all the time, and we weren't just poor, we were indebted all the time. Um, part of the way the debt system worked in my village was that families who had other family in the States or in Europe, they would send back, like, toiletries, you know, these sort of Western goods, and then these families would, would sell them to the villagers, and they'd make a nice profit off that. And so I just remembered, you know, my mom would be indebted to these people and they would have to pay interest on the interest. And it was predatory lending on a village level. And I do recall this one instance in which the, the village government put some kind of paper on our door uh, saying that we were debtors who didn't pay their debts. And it was, it was pretty shameful. It was sort of this public way of you know, shaming our family and my sister was so embarrassed she took it down and you know, got into some trouble because of that. When I came to the States, uh, there were a few Vietnamese kids in my classroom uh, and they really helped me to sort of understand the teacher. I remember this one girl, her name was Jessica. She would help translate for me but her Vietnamese wasn't great so I had to like try to understand her like Americanized Vietnamese. Um, I was in the ESL for a while too with English as a second language uh, for a while. My teacher was Mr. Gatto, and I was in it with other Filipino kids and other Vietnamese kids. And I don't really recall what it was like not to know English. This is really odd. Um, this kid named Wesley taught me uh, sign language. Uh, it, 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 he showed me how to say I love you. You point to your eye like this. And then you would do this to your heart, love, and you point to the person, you. 
I remember going up to Mr. Gatto, my English as a second language teacher, and I did this. I love you. And Mr. Gatto told me, don't you know that it's not polite to point? And, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, that was, <laughs> that was a kind of an awkward situation then. Um, I do remember uh, getting picked on uh, by these kids. Uh, you know, I got into a fight with, with a couple of them. And it was kind of cool because my dad went out to, in the morning with me the next day after I got into a fight with him. And in his broken English, told the kid we need to be friends. His name was Nathaniel, and I think we ended up being friends. So that was kind of cool. Um, but you know, it wasn't really so much about my race or my language, it was just I was just different. You know, kids aren't nice to kids who are different. And it was it was kind of a nice story. You know, we started off, you know, fighting each other and then we became friends. Uh, my name is Huang Tan Tam. Uh, my last name, Huang, means emperor. It's not a real name, we were originally Tran, Tian. And my middle name, Tan, means purity. Which is a little embarrassing because it's also my sister's middle name and I don't know what my mom was thinking. Uh, my first name, Tham, means uh, soul or spirit. So you put it together, it means, you know, imperial, pure spirit. Um, my dad's name is really cool. My dad's name means imperial dragon of the clouds, Pan Bun Lang, which is it's really impressive, far more impressive than mine. Uh, please forgive me, Vietnamese speakers, but I don't do this well. So I have a flat northern accent, so when I say my name, it's Huang Tan Tam. Uh, if I were to be from the south, I'd have a little bit of more of a uh, uh, twang to it, a bit Wang Tan Tam. Or if I say, for example, uh, I'm going to the market, you know, Tho Di Kya, I'm going to the market. Um, and the southerner might say, Tho Di Kya. Um, I can't do s the central accent so well, but I do know, so their region is called Hue, and I think they say Hue. So you get the sense of like, it's a heavy accent. Um, and they're really hard to understand simply because they have different vocabulary too. There, there's some sort of dialectical mix with the natives in the area. But I've seen Northerners affect a Southern accent when they want to be convivial. Uh, my uncle does it when we have a party and he wants to liven it up, he'll bust out his Southern twang even though he's got the most northern of accents. It's so, there, there's a sort of playfulness to a southern accent I, I'm, I'm really fond of. There's a genuineness to it too. Um, I feel s stiffened by my northern accent a little bit. So when I was growing up, there would always be this proverb and, and it's put, been put into song and we were reminded of it all the time. And it, it reads, Công cha như núi Thái Sơn, nghĩa mẹ như nước trong nguồn chảy ra. And it means, it's like the, the, the the labor or the 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 work your father does for you—it's like you know—it's like this mountain, this great mountain. And um, I think it means virtue or grace. And the grace of your mother's grace is like an, an endless pouring stream. And so I suppose a southerner would probably say something like "Công cha như núi Thái Sơn, nghĩa mẹ như nước trong nguồn chảy ra," and it's so Vietnamese because, you know, it's Confucian, it's filial, it's there to remind you of where you're from and, and your, your duty to your parents. Um, it's also a, a concept I'm constantly having to negotiate with my American identity. My American identity is an individual in a society that values the individual versus just the unit. Um, it's something I think about a lot.